Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my another video of uh, NestJS Advanced Course. Okay, so in this video we are going to talk about uh, server side events, SSE. And you might have heard about uh, server side events, web sockets and all those things. So what kind of communication we un already understand between client and a server? Let's say this is a server and this is a client. Client will be sending a request and server will be sending a response back right this is a purely synchronous call where you are getting a status code and the data let's say you are creating something or simply let's say http crud you are doing and you are getting the the response back with a proper status code and data let's say you are running some background process and you want a synchronous notification back to your front end how you will do it I'm not doing CRUD, I'm doing some asynchronous operation that will take some time and you already know that HTTP request can wait only for HTTP timeout, right? Let's say you are running some background job. Let's say you are hitting a simple HTTP post request, but in the post you are doing 10 different things and you want it to, what you want to do is you don't want to wait the client. Client will submit the request. Okay, I want to perform this operation server will accept the the payload whatever the inputs and server will say say is okay i got your request i will process it and i will acknowledge you so here right now it will just send acknowledgement that i have received your request and now i will start processing in this particular case your client doesn't need to wait and show the loading behavior or wait for the http response because whatever now the server will be doing that will take time like you you have submitted a csv with thousands of the rec record and we need to process it and the server is saying is i'm sending you the acknowledgement nothing but 200 status code and i'm going to uh, 204 maybe no content 201 is created 200 is okay 202 accepted so server will say, okay, I accept your payload. I will start processing it and I will let you know once my task is done. So how this can be done? There are many different ways. Uh, simply we thought about, okay, WebSocket. Okay. So WebSocket has a different use case. WebSocket provides the uh, channelized communication between client and server where client can send a message, client can send a payload or some event to the server and server can emit an event and then the connected clients can listen to that. It's a bi-directional client to the server, server to the client. But here, what we need to do is we need to just acknowledge the client. Okay, my task is done. So it's like a simple one way, one way stream. And that is called server side events. We can create a server side event with the Node.js Express or Nest.js. And the objective of server side events to acknowledge the client. Okay, this particular task is done. Okay, I am done. This is kind of acknowledgement you can send to the client and why we need it. There are many strategies which you can think of in the same approach also. Let's say I don't know SSE. This is simply Node.js server. So what actually happens is let's say you are actually doing a, some heavy task. And you also want to know that once this task is done, I need to do something else. So there are different approach. That first approach is a long polling. What that, that means is you actually doing some operation that will change the state of your uh, resource like let's say user, user has been created or somewhere. Then you will keep sending this polling request to the server to check if the, this whatever the task which was expected by this is completed or not. This is called long polling and in a particular interval you keep calling the server and requesting okay this is done or not. That is long poly. You keep asking. So, but you don't know when that task is done because it's a client initiated. Client is initiating the polling and server is just saying, okay, it's not done, not done. And now it's done. So client in a particular interval will keep sending a request. So this is how it works. And we have used this thing, this approach at many places. This is a long poly. That's one way. But I don't want to do it like this. I will not be calling my server unnecessary because I don't know when the task will be done. So instead of long polling, I will just use SSE. 
whatever the task you are doing i will see okay just send a server side events to the client so that i will know that this particular task or the event is finished whatever you want to do you can send and that will be happening from client to the server this arrow should be reversed that's why i need to delete it so here you will be sending a server side events there are other options also which is like a web socket you just establish a web socket communication between the client and server where client also can send a event and server can respond for that particular event that's totally unidirectional i mean both both way client to the server server to the client but if you want a, just just a one way communication then you can use the sse i mean the the fallback is you can just always use web socket but in this case you can also use server side events there are other uh, mechanisms also there which are also available but to acknowledge the client asynchronously web socket server side events are there there are other third party clients are also there i mean might be you have heard about this push up it's like third party tool that also uses a web socket so what happens is let's say you are sending a task this will process the task and maybe it will take some time it will send it it will create a channel with the with the pusher and pusher will take care of acknowledging the all connected clients it's like a, you can say a, a wrapper implementation on top of web socket okay so let's see how we can do sse server side events in the next js so we can see a uh, simple documentation sse and you just need to add a tag sse on your controller class that will become a server side events and that is going to and how we can orchestrate it we can use just observables but this is how you do in vanilla javascript a simple html with javascript where you can send a message right what we are doing is simple implementation we are trying to achieve and here we can say this is let's say my node js server and this is my client and i wanted to just send a sse event this is my server and this is my client and here we are just doing a push messages to client and you can just do a multiple messages it's not like one one time you can do it you can create a stream and you can start sending that and you can see here uh, i mean there should be a simple example of a simple html javascript uh, here we will take a look on to the next js so sse decorator you need to add and you will be just using uh, observable now why there is a must that you should all you should use observable only why because observables are stream of data that will keep sending that that that's kind of a stream which is coming over the time so that's like a perfect use case with the next js to emit the events from the next js controller right so here you can see what we are doing is this is the client side event source event source is i think native uh, library it's available on uh, windows uh, sorry browser dom event source and the endpoint which you are listening to and whenever there is a message received at the client side it will parse the data and it will send you so that's the the clean way of receiving the messages from a server so sse is actually server endpoint we created event source client and dot dot on message will be triggered whenever there is a message right so we can just take a look on to simple implementation so this is my simple controller and this is index.html and what we are doing in the index.html is a simple implementation and here you can see what we are doing is uh, this is simple get so whenever you hit a forward slash we are going to render this index.html on the front end page i mean we don't have a front end here it's like on the forward slash we are rendering this index.html template so index.html will be visible on the browser and then there is a second route which is sse so this is your main.ts this is your app module this is your app controller and then we have a second route which is sse this is the endpoint right and what this endpoint is doing this is endpoint is returning an observable interval is actually a rx operator when you do a dot pipe interval is going to emit the stream of data and you are doing just a pipe so if you want to just play with the data like uh, you want to customize the, the the data which is coming from the interval stream 
you can customize it because here what we are doing is in every one second this interval will be triggered and here we are emitting this data you see data with the hello world so this SSE uh, endpoint is returning this observable response in every one second so it's like a stream of data coming from this controller this is uh, not a one-time observable one-time observable means you make a call and receive the observable subscribe it and return the data but this is uh, coming over the time and the beauty of the nest.js controller is you can return an observable it's the nest.js responsibility to resolve the uh, subscribe the uh, one-time observable and return you but this is not a one-time observable it's like every time it is going to return you some observable data and nest.js will keep emitting the actual values from this observable so here we can just run this and we will can just play with what is inside index.html here we are just using event source so if you see what we are doing whatever the data we are coming from this event source we are just creating a new node li node and we are just appending the message and appending to the document.body so whenever there is a new message arrived we are just concating that message through the html dom that's it simple implementation and let's see that so here this is simple controller forward slash should render the index.html and then uh, here that index.html is looking for this endpoint and here we are returning an observable so this message event is actually simple interface and this is returning a simple observable now let's see how it really works you can see internal server error okay index.html is not in the dist folder so npm run start okay this is why this is happening because i'm using index.html and when you are creating a build or npm run start this index.html is not being copied to the dist so i think there is a fix uh, in um, nest config you can specify the parameters like what all uh, additional artifacts you have which you want to copy over to the dist folder whenever you are doing a build or when you are starting the application so that after doing that new message hello world and why that is happening every second there is an event coming these are the server side events uh, we can also check that in the network tab this is an event stream coming from this endpoint right this is the event stream like what is the type when it is coming all these things this is like a same web socket kind of stuff but this is a one side server to the client this is like a server side events coming from server to the client with this data and now we already have this index.html so we can play with the data what we need to do and this is returning an observable this is controller so this, this is that's all i wanted to talk about in this video like uh, how it really works a very simple example uh, let's talk about something else in the next video